So it's great to be here today. Um, it's uh, interesting. I'm going to break a couple of rules today. First is uh, doing a keynote in such a short period of time, so you have to hang tough with me. And the second is using video in a presentation, which I've never done before. <clears throat> so little known fact, this is not my first time doing a keynote in Korea. It's actually my second. The first time was in 2011 for Korea Telecom when they launched KTU Cloud, which was the first public cloud in Korea, which I architected and built. And during that time, when I was doing public speaking, I was really talking about uh, these three major eras in computing. So we've seen, in my opinion, three major platform shifts. There was the advent of the computer to begin with in the mainframe era. Then we went to enterprise computing, or what I call client server. And then after that, we went to cloud computing. And each time, we had these massive shifts, these changes in the architecture, in the operational model, in the development model, in the, in the application delivery model. Each time, there's these significant shifts, about every 20 to 25 years. So I was talking about this for, I don't know, years and years and years. But the first time I did was here in Korea at that keynote in 2011. So I think we're entering into this fourth era, what I call autonomous computing. And what's happened is we've already figured out how to scale up. We figured out how to scale out. We figured out how to automate everything. We figured out how to put APIs on everything. We've you know, kind of evolved information technology to the point that we've come to now where we can take something like artificial intelligence and wrap it around all of those pieces and create an abstraction layer that allows us to basically do something new and meaningful in information technology. So I'll let you read that. That's my definition of auto uh, autonomic or autonomous commu computing. So the key here is that things have changed with the advent of certain kinds of control points and APIs. What do I mean by a control point? I mean like a control plane, right? When you go to Amazon Web Services, you have a way to manage everything. Your networks, your security, your load balancing, your storage, your compute instances, your Kubernetes, whatever it is, right? It's one big gigantic control plane, and you have an API that plugs into it, and that allows you to drive everything. It's the same when you go to OpenStack. You've got the OpenStack APIs. You can drive the storage. You can drive... Uh, the networking, you can drive um, all the instances, and so on. So this gives us a unique opportunity, right? We can sort of end the dirty work. We can create the ability to have co-pilots, AI-based co-pilots, that can basically take care of setting up uh, infrastructure for us, for deploying applications, take away all the dirty work. And we see that with developer tools as well. So I'm going to show you a demo, not live, um, where I've got a one-shot English prompt using a tool called Clio, which is based off a of GPT script from Acorn Labs. And what this tool will do, it will, it will take that English language, and it will figure out how to drive OpenStack. We're not telling it anything about OpenStack that it doesn't already know. It knows about OpenStack. It's read the documentation. It's got instructions about how to go there to the website for OpenStack and actually download the, the documentation and use it to drive the deployment of a bunch of instances to set up the security groups, the networking, the floating IPs, the storage, all of the pieces, and then to automatically deploy a Kubernetes distribution on top of it. So this is the prompt. I'm not going to walk through it. Um, you know, it's just simple English. Anybody can do this. You don't have to be an operator. But if you're an operator, you know what it means. Um, and this is what we're going to feed into Clio. And it's going to be smart enough to actually see when it makes mistakes, and I'll call that out, and to correct itself. All right. Let's go. All right, so there's the prompt. And so it takes that prompt, and it talks to chat GPT, and it comes up with a strategy and a plan. So now it's got a 12-step plan that it's going to go through to basically talk to OpenStack cluster, to start sequencing up instances, configuring them, and validating them. So there, it missed. It couldn't find Ubuntu 24. It ran the wrong command. It figures out how to run the correct command. Boom, 
gets the correct list of images from OpenStack, starts spinning up the instances using Ubuntu 24, and it's figuring this all out on its own. It figures out if it makes a mistake, it automatically corrects it, moves on, and there's no real operator intervention unless it has a problem, and then it asks the operator, how do I fix this? OK, so it's brought up all the instances, and now it's uh, SSHing into them. It's trying to verify that they're up and available and ready to take Kubernetes with the Mirantis K0's distribution. OK, now it's configuring K0's. Again, it made a mistake in how to use K0's. But it figures it out. It corrects itself, which is amazing. And then it makes the correct default K0's YAML, uh, K0's control YAML file. Now it's taking the information that it has about the IP addresses for all the instances that have been spun up on OpenStack. And it's going to rewrite that default, right, the default, and see it's rewriting it with the correct IP addresses. Now it's figuring this all out itself from that simple English language prompt, right? So it's pretty amazing. And this is all happening in about seven minutes. So from running this, the beginning of the script to the end, you've got a Kubernetes cluster up and running on OpenStack in seven minutes flat. Now, it doesn't matter if it's five instances, 10 instances, 100 instances, it's the same. So k zeros is being installed here. It's going through the process of basically going out to each of those nodes via SSH, making sure that it can install k zeros. And now it's going to run kubeconfig to basically make sure that the uh, cluster is there. All right, so the cluster's there. And then at the end, the operators who doesn't know anything about Kubernetes, they're a newbie. First, it gets a summary. And then the operator says, hey, show me all my pods in plain English. And the AI figures that out. So this is what's amazing, right? Like the platform change that's happening right now with operations with development is less about making some kind of big leap in terms of how we think architecturally about compute systems. It's more about taking everything that we've built to this date and putting an abstraction layer around it, being able to drive everything via AI, uh, APIs, being able to have these places where, whether it's OpenStack, whether it's a private cloud or a public cloud, whether it's Kubernetes, whether it's VMware, it doesn't matter what it is, there's these ubiquitous control points where everywhere we look, there's something that controls our infrastructure, and that something has an API into it, and then we have AI that can figure out how to manage and control all of those systems via those control points and those APIs. So that's it. That's all I had for today, and uh, thank you very much.